if this car is going to be worth the wait. Oh, hello. Yeah, I think it might be. Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped, and welcome to a video I've been wanting to make for ages with a car I've been wanting to get my hands on since I first saw the artistic renders of it appear on the internet, what seems like ages ago. I remember talking about it in one of my midweek 180s. Well, it's taken me a while to get hold of one, but finally I have, and it's parked outside, and I cannot wait to share it with you. Now, if I thought it was good looking in all of the stylized artistic renders that you see when cars launched, nothing compared with when you actually see one of these in the metal. For me, and I know looks are very subjective, this is a good looking car, but I also think it's edgy and it's different and it just oozes quality. For me, I think this is one of the most exciting cars currently on sale today. It's certainly very, very difficult to get your hands on. So there's quite a wide range of different spec options with the EV6. It starts from the Air and goes all the way up to the GT, which actually we won't see until next year, but more on that later. This particular one is a GT Line S. Let's hit you with the most important number first of all. This is going to dent your wallet to the tune of £48,395, but it is full of spec. Now this is the rear wheel drive variant. Now I'm doing EVs, it's 168 kilowatts actually, but for old money, that's 226 bhp. If you go for the all wheel drive version, that is dual motor, so motor at the back and motor at the front, that's 321 bhp, so a little bit more poke. And then the GT that's coming next year, oh boy, 577 bhp that's the one that's going to basically destroy the 0 to 60 time in probably around three seconds this one is just a smidge over five can't wait to see that one but this one intrigues me because it's the rear wheel drive option range wise now again if i had longer with the car i'd be able to put these numbers to the test but range kia quote 316 miles of range with the uh, two-wheel drive version and that dips a little bit to 304 miles with the all-wheel drive version. We'll talk a little bit more about that once we get driving. Styling, let's just take a walk around. I think the front of the car styling wise is right on the money for me. I think it looks fantastic. I love the new Kia logo by the way. It's the first Kia I've had that's donning that one. Um, Laser light technology at the front, really, really uh, cool adaptive lights um, that we're seeing on lots of high-end cars now. Sadly, I'm not going to have this car overnight, so I won't be able to put that to the test. But it just, I think the, the, the car starts really nicely at the front. But as it goes around the back, it's got this lovely roof line, and then the rear of the car is a challenging design. I think you're either going to love it or hate it. Personally, for me, I love it. The side and rear profile of this car, I really like. I love the sloping roof line. You've got a lot of gloss black trim on the kind of B and C pillars, privacy glass, and it just makes the paintwork stand out really nicely. I do really like this little spoiler on the top. It's quite subtle, but it kind of sticks out at the side. There's actually little down lighters underneath it, and that just adds an area of interest to this rear kind of hip of the car. And then the standout feature, I guess, is this rear light bar that also kind of doubles up as a little lip spoiler. It's a very, very big Kia logo there, though. I probably I'd like that a little bit smaller, a little bit more subtle. Might even take that off if I owned one. Uh, let's just pop the boot and talk about practicality a little bit. Normally, I do my can you fit a dog in the boot, but we've actually got them just stood here chilling out. So boot space wise, 520 litres. It does have a, a false floor. It's only a couple of inches of depth, but you know, they're always quite useful places. I know when we take the dogs away, we often put the dog beds underneath the false floor just to keep them out of the way more than anything. 60-40 uh, split in terms of seats dropping down makes that a really usable, practical space. Now, the car does have a front boot or fruit or frunk, 
however you want to put it. Um, the size of that depends on whether you've got rear wheel or all wheel drive. So this is the rear wheel drive version. So the front boot in this is 52 litres, which isn't massive. At the moment, it's being used to charge all the store all the charge cables and all the various charging paraphernalia. If you get the all-wheel drive version, because there's then a motor at the front, that reduces to just 20 litres, which isn't, it's not brilliant really, um, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. Let's just talk charging. The charge port is actually just here. And in order to open that, you actually need to go into the car and the button's just inside the car. Pretty cool, huh? So, all of these have a 77.4 uh, kilowatt hour battery. So let's just talk some charge times. So standard wall box at home, seven kilowatts, you're gonna get a 10 to 100% charge in just a smidge under 10 hours. And that's fine, because that's an overnight plug-in, right? And, and I very rarely run an EV down to as low as 10% anyway. In public, if you then start using fast DC charging on a 50 kilowatt, 125 amp DC charger, you're gonna get a 10 to 80% charge in around 73 minutes. Remembering, you know, in public, you would normally not charge beyond 80% because that just takes a lot more time. So you really wanna, your, your effective charge window is kind of 10 or 20% up to about 80%. You could get that down if you got onto one of the really rapid chargers that are becoming more and more common. That could come down uh, to as low as 18 minutes. So that, they're your kind of charging times. But the other thing that this car does, which is really, really cool, is does what's called vehicle to load. So you've got a special cable that plugs into this charge port that basically has a three pin power socket. Oh look, <laughs> it closes after a while. Has a three pin power socket. There's also a three pin power socket in the rear passenger compartment, just underneath the rear bench seat. And you can plug stuff in. So you could plug in, you know, power tools, um, a TV. Um, you could even, in the worst case scenario, plug in another electric car if you needed to do some emergency charging. So you could charge another electric car off of this one, but the caveat is um, it only produces or, or um, provides three and a half kilowatts of power. So, uh, you know, you're not gonna do a rapid charge on another car, but I find that really interesting. It's the first EV that I've reviewed that's got this kind of vehicle to anything type technology, and we'll start to see that more and more. Let's jump in the back, because the interior is really, really nice. There's loads of interesting stuff to talk about. First thing you notice when you get in this car is a completely flat floor. No transmission tunnel in this car, it's an EV. Maybe that's an obvious statement, but it's very, very noticeable. Um, all the interior in this car, much of the plastics are recycled plastics, and this kind of what looks like Alcantara and leather is all vegan. Um, so it's very kind of sustainable in here, going along with the ethos of the EV, I guess. Uh, pretty good space. I actually love the headrest design here. It's very cool. And then the power sockets are down there. And as I said before, there's a three pin power socket there. So I could sit here with my Mac plugged in with a normal domestic three pin power socket uh, and do some work. There's USB charge ports on the back of the seats just there. Very, very nice. Very well thought through interior. Heated seats at the back as well. But for me, all the action happens up there. Come on. It's proper special in here. Really, really nice. Let me just power things up. Just the, the, the design of, of the ergonomics in here, I guess the most striking bit is probably this floating console here. You've got your gear selector here, start, start button, uh, heated and cooled seats in the front. Um, you've got a wireless charge mat for your phone, which is also cooled, a couple of drink storage uh, places there, massive storage bin just there, and again, a huge storage bin under there. It's just got, it just oozes family practicality, this car. Driving position, really nice. Reach and tilt adjustment on the steering wheel. I like the design of the steering wheel. Again, that new Kia logo bold there. 
In terms of the MMI, um, well, first off, having lived with a Sorento recently, it's the same uh, MMI system as I've got in that, but this sweeping screen here is, is really nice. I like it a lot. I love the detailing on the dash. Um, some really nice features in here. As I said, there's a lot of spec in this car. It's got a brilliant head-up display with augmented reality. So when you get your um, control instructions from your sat-nav, that's very, very cool. And it's just really nicely laid out. To be honest, so far, there's not a great deal I don't like about the car, but the proof will be in the driving, I think. I've literally done sort of 15 miles to bring it home from the dealer this morning. So let me get some camera set up and we will take it for a drive. It's got a number of different drive modes and lots and lots to talk about. Best day for reviewing cars today. There's a lot of rain in the air, but I'll make do. So I'm going to start this review in um, one of the three drive modes, Eco. So we've got Eco, Normal and Sport. Um, and I'm guessing, although I'm actually driving on a country lane, this is the kind of drive mode you'd probably use around town. It deadens things off quite a lot and it's not to my liking, if I'm honest. I'm guessing the other time you might stick it in Eco is if you're cruising on a motorway and you're in cruise control and you've just set it to 60 or 70 miles an hour, it doesn't really matter what the throttle response is like, so you might just stick it in eco for a longer journey. If you're on a B road or you're wanting to have some fun, it's not the mode for me at all. I don't actually like driving it in this mode very much. I've also got um, different modes of regenerative braking that I can set with little paddles that are just behind the steering wheel. Um, you've got basically, it goes all the way down from from level zero so at the moment I'm in level zero there's there's lift off you just coast there's no regen braking at all and then you step up through the different levels level one level two level three and as you go up them you can actually feel the car retard a little bit and then the top level is what's called I pedal which is basically one pedal driving but the thing I like about this is that there's a definite kind of, that there's, you can feel the differences between the different regens. Sometimes you get in an EV and, and even if you turn the regen up, it doesn't really make a great deal of difference. In this, it does. I wouldn't say the eye pedal or one pedal driving is as aggressive as some EVs I've driven, but it's, it's not bad. But yeah, on the whole, eco mode isn't really for me. Um, I think it would just be a case of, for my driving preference, I'd probably just use it on a dual carriageway. Okay, next logical progression, we'll go up to sport or to normal rather. It just gives a little bit more response. And I reckon for 90% of users, they're gonna be in normal mode quite a lot of the time. As we go through some corners, it's got quite a nice feel to the road. It does feel like a heavy car. Um, and I know that's the thing that all EVs are plagued with is weight. You've got to carry the batteries around after all. So it does feel like a heavy car but that doesn't translate into a kind of wallowy boaty feel. You just can feel the momentum as you come into a corner. Um, the final mode is sport. We'll step it up to sport and then we'll go and find some nice roads, I think. Now, while I wait to get to some really sporty roads, let's just talk a bit about some of the other interesting things about this car first off this particular car is box fresh it's got well when it when i picked it up it had 350 miles on the clock so it's still very very much i'm not so sure a case of kind of running a car in but it's still tight and new and i think over time it will loosen up a little bit the historical consumption information in terms of energy consumption on this car again it's only 375 miles now so uh, it's been averaging 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour and um, first things first whenever demo cars whenever I get a hold of them they always have when you look at the historical economy information it's always terrible because people are basically getting in the car and then ragging it to see how fast it can go so I can't get a, a, a decent, accurate representation of just what the economy of this vehicle is like. 
the the 300 plus mile range makes this car interesting for me because it opens up the usability of the car just a little bit more because you can do those longer journeys the mg uh, ev i have at the moment is a brilliant car but its range of about 140 miles just means that when you've got a longer journey you just don't pick up the keys for that car you take a petrol car because you know if you're gonna you know i've done a couple of bits of filming away where maybe it's 200 or so miles there and back i'm never gonna take a, a car that's got 140 mile range to do a journey like that because i know it's gonna be a nightmare this different proposition you could drive it there charge it overnight drive it back or one charge for the whole journey honestly this i think this car is going to open up ev to a lot of people because it looks great it's full of amazing technology i think the price yes i know nearly fifty thousand pounds is a lot of money for a car for a lot of people and that's you know the mg i've got 25 grand and even with that i've had people say 25 grand for a new car you know we've got to be realistic you know new cars today are expensive things and you know fifty thousand pounds for a high-end car with the amount of kit this has i think is really really good value okay bit of twisty road i've got it in sport mode i've actually turned the regen to the minimum setting don't know whether that's fully off but it's yeah there's no region so first things first this is not the sporty one if you wanted a little bit more punch because it's only got 220 odd horsepower you could get the all-wheel drive one that's more than 100 more horsepower so that would be if you wanted really sporty driving so i don't think first off i need to if you like i need to evaluate this car based on the fact it's not the fast sporty one that said i still want to have a bit of fun down a b road when i get the opportunity and the feel of the car i've got in the short time i've been with it is it gives that it's it's got enough poke and enough punch in sport mode little bit of slip from the back it's rear wheel drive only remember it does deliver that and and and, and in, in enough um to to make you happy it's not an out and out sports car it's certainly no Porsche Taycan or you know Audi e-tron GT that's for sure but often you drive those cars and you think these cars have got so much go do you ever really need that much performance and the answer often is no not really it sits on the road with a nice amount of confidence I think it's probably more at home in the longer flowing corners. Out the way, pigeons. Wow, how many? <laughs> oh my goodness me. There must have been some seed on the road or something. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a nice car to drive uh, on a back road. I have to say though, for me where this car absolutely comes into its own is just on the kind of the stuff you would do on a day-to-day -day basis if you wanted this car as your daily you know your dual carriageway motorway driving your city driving it's brilliant at that and yet when you wanted a little bit of fun on your way home from work it will deliver that too i think for, for a lot of fun and for you know smiles per mile i think you either need to go for the all-wheel drive one or you need to wait till next year when the GT comes out. I mean, that thing with nearly 600 horsepower is going to be awesome. But yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, but as I said, I think this car is about the sum of its parts rather than just about its dynamic driving. It's pretty good down a B road. But where I'm sat right now, the cockpit, the, the amount of equipment, the technology, the smoothness, all of those things make this car a very, very attractive prospect. So, okay, let's finish off this video with a little bit of dual carriageway driving and my final impressions of the Kia EV6. Really interesting one, this. I think when I actually that reminds me one of the things you have to do when you get in this car is push the little button here and turn off the uh, lane departure assistance because it's really annoying <laughs> now it's off it's good so overall I think 
stylistically I love the looks of this car I even love the rear end of the car which I know is a bone of contention for some people but I like it when cars are just that little bit edgy and for me it's got it's got elements of all kinds of interesting cars there's a bit of Aston Martin DBX there there's a little bit of Zagato shooting brake there trust me I can see it even if you can't <laughs> um, it's just one of those one of those vehicles that has lots of interesting angles and I, and I love that um, performance wise this particular version the two-wheel drive with 230 brake or whatever it is 226 it's not enough go for me I'd, I'd, I'd have to have the all-wheel drive option just to give me that little bit more performance clearly I haven't driven that but that extra hundred or so horsepower would just make this car a little bit more my cup of tea that said this is probably the thinking man's car actually this is probably the one to go for inside the cabin I think this is one of the nicest cabins I've sat in for a long time it's very very well thought out in here um, I love the centre console I love the gear change I love the lots of places to put stuff uh, and I really like the whole MMI um, you know the interface is really really easy to use you can use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto if you want to so all in all it's just a really nice place to sit I can imagine this would make a fantastic daily actually I would I would recommend this car if you're looking at an EV I think this is gonna be a great gateway car into EV for lots of people interestingly talking to uh, the guys at Kia they've had an awful lot of people trade in Teslas for one of these um, and, and I think of all the non Tesla cars you know it, it's up there massive massive thank you to the guys at um, Hendy Kia Portsmouth because they reached out to me this is their new demonstrator so if you want to drive it get in touch they're doing test drives um, so yeah I'd love to know what you think of the EV6 put it in the comments below um, and if you've enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up as I said comments below are always welcome and if you haven't done so already please subscribe to Petrol Ped for plenty more content to come I know I'll probably need to change my channel name soon to Lecky Ped or something that doesn't have the word Petrol I'm saying.